Wake up, samurai. We have a city to patch. Wait the f up, samurai. Hey, hey, hey. I'm the Global Cherry, and today I will be reviewing Dying Light 2, addressing new patches, and showing you OP secrets. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Dying Light 2 has improved from the first game. The parkour and combat felt very unique and exciting. Vault kick, wall run, and everyone's favorite drop kick really added to the experience. The grappling hook and paraglider are also game changers, as they get you somewhere as fast as possible. Although these are very fun, the downsides are depletion of stamina. Aiden may not lose stamina while running like Crane, but he starts the game with the stamina of a snail. To increase stamina and health, you'll need inhibitors. I was able to get many inhibitors through killing Jerry anomalies, entering quarantine zones, and doing main missions. Now let's take a look at the game story-wise. The main story was interesting, but sometimes it felt dragged out. For example, Aiden is stuck in the feud of the peacekeepers and survivors, like a parent with two bickering children. I sided with the peacekeepers because they're actually grateful for your help, and you get a crossbow for supporting them. The broadcast mission was my favorite mission in the game, climbing the VNC tower, because I can actually feel imminent danger of falling to my death. The side missions were also enjoyable, and sometimes I prefer them over some main story missions. Why get Rosario Dawson new shoes when you can clear a horde of infected at a metro station? I've never seen someone so passionate about a pair of Nikes. We need to get me a new pair. They're just shoes! The game could have been scarier, but the immunity timer scared me more than the zombies. Aiden, why can't you touch grass for more than five minutes? Oh no! Dying Light 1 was very scary due to volatiles roaming the streets at night. <laughs> I barely seen one in this game. Screw you! This game also tends to place more focus on humans rather than the infected, though I did appreciate how there was a significant impact of our choices. A lot has changed since the recent patch on PC and console. Deathloop bugs and co-op issues have been fixed, and we can now hide our health bar at 100% health. Bad news is that the grappling hook, cork charm, and broomstick have been nerfed. Nothing has been changed for the grappling hook except the fact you can't scale buildings. It's broken! If you want military tech to upgrade the grappling hook, here are the locations by the way. You can still grapple enemies with it, and there is a way to effectively scale the building with one. Use the wall run skill to scale up the surface, and then throw up your grappling hook. It's easy as pie! It's as easy as pie! <laughs> As for the Korok Charm, you now require 666 scrap to repair your weapon. This amount of scrap is ridiculous that you might as well find a new weapon. A weapon costs about 300 scrap to craft, and vendors sell you 30 scrap maximum. At least make the charm cheaper. Since your current weapons drain durability faster, I'll let you in on a secret, okay? After the broadcast mission, head to the Jiori container on the VNC roof and open it. Every time you leave the VNC tower and come back, you will receive a gold weapon your level. I think this applies to other Jiori containers as well. Vendors also sell high-level weapons, but coins might be an issue for people too. If you spent all your coins on cleaning supplies like a certain someone, it's me by the way, I'll let you in on a tip. With a fully upgraded grappling hook and paraglider, you can breeze through side missions requiring parkour challenges, unlocking parkour manuals. These give a lot of old world money. More parkour challenges will be added to the map soon. Using your stab skill, you can obtain precious loot in quarantine zones after secretly taking out the zombies with a throwing knife. If you've unlocked the sunken city, just repeatedly grapple drowners for blue crystals. If you want to take your anchor out on someone, go to these spots on the map to get high tier weapons off of chunky looking renegades. As for the broomstick, it's nerfed. As you fly close to the ground on an inverted broom, you will die upon reaching the ground. My method of using the broom will save you the pain of dying repeatedly and an elevator trip up the VNC tower. 
So fly up to a considerable high distance as you travel to your chosen destination. When you get to have stamina, switch your accessory and fall. Then launch your paraglider for a smooth landing. <laughs> you are now prepared for Quidditch. And if you don't have the broom currently, unfortunately, you will not be able to get the broomstick. So you will remain a mere muggle. Enemies are now far more aggressive after the update. Fighters do three times as much damage and renegades take half your health from one arrow shot. <laughs> Get back. Ow, ow. They also dodge you and block excessively while mocking you. Howlers can now spot you easily. There will be more dangerous infected, and the night chases will get harder, increasing one's chances of meeting a hungry volatile. The central loop is also covered in fog ever since the patch. Is it a glitch or is it because of the nukes? It's so foggy that peacekeepers mistaken me for a zombie or renegade. Lastly, new cutscenes were added to the endings. Oh, and if you're on console, there's a chance the hoverboard glitch does not work anymore. So you can't ride the waves, man! Would you like some help farming rare and unique trophies from the infected for your upgrades? I have a plan. Go to Margaret's place on this map. There's a narrow bridge separating her house and the streets. Upon nighttime, bully a howler nearby so it can call its homies over. The bridge will make the infected pursue you from one direction. Stand on the bridge, take out your doom shotgun, and shoot the waves of zombies. The chase level will get to level 4, and you will see volatiles. Volatiles die to the shotgun in one shot or more, so they should be scared of you. If the zombies become too overwhelming for you, slowly retreat to the safe zone while shooting them. Volatiles cannot turn you into a human Snickers bar when you're under UV. How did I get the Doom Shotgun? Find the demonic rubber duckies in these locations. Take the elevator of the VNC tower to the basement and form a pentagram. Once you start the Doom Challenge, immediately quit the game. The gun will be in your inventory, but the elevator will be glitched, so you won't be able to return. Having a rough time with renegades? You won't have to kill them. They'll kill each other for you. Shoot their friends with infected arrows and you got yourself an army of virals. To repel the remaining virals, just harass them with a high-powered UV flashlight. Would you like a frying pan to beat the zombies mercilessly? Go to the roof of the renegade stronghold where you'll meet a talking chicken, triggering a side quest. The chicken will talk about the destruction of humankind, call you fat, and leave before you decide to turn it into chicken nuggets. You'll get a blueprint for the frying pan of destiny, and I have no scrap. Overall, I rate this game 8 out of 10. The lack of 2 points is because of the story and me being salty about the Korok charm. There's a story DLC coming in May. What do you think of the new patch? Did it improve Dying Light 2 or ruin it? Comment below your opinion. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like the video, and share these OP secrets with other people. Thank you for watching, and that's all. Mm -hmm.